Hello everybody and welcome to Music Industry Insights Worldwide and today I have the awesome Fiona with us. Hi Fiona, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, you'll have to forgive me. My voice is a little bit dodgy today, uh, but I will do my best. But thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure and thank you for coming along. And I know the feeling because I'm not feeling great myself today. So get well soon and fingers crossed you'll be okay. Yeah, thank be okay. you. <laughs> and, uh, although just to say, I know people probably, uh, not everyone can see this for the podcast, but you look amazing. So you certainly oh, don't look <laughs> off, off, off at all. <laughs> you put a little bit of bronzer on and you can't tell. So that's the trick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you, Fiona. Do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, where you're from and what you do? Okay. So my name is Fiona Ross and I wear um, a few different hats. Um, I'm a musician, so I'm a, an artist that works in the mainly in the jazz industry. So I'm a, a pianist and a vocalist and a songwriter and a producer, but I'm also a journalist. Yes. Uh, and I'm also the founder of a not-for-profit organization called Women in Jazz Media, which is global, but I am based in London. Oh, fantastic. So tell us a little bit more about Women in Jazz Media, because that sounds great. Oh, but well, you know what? It's the most beautiful thing. Uh, and I've got to be honest, a lot of people ask me uh, as if I had some kind of, you know, plan. Yeah. <laughs> but it's quite, so, uh, uh, you know, but to be honest, and it was, um, we had our three year anniversary um, in November just gone. So it's, it's just oh, wow. over three years. Okay. And it, it was just a day and it was during COVID. Um, and I just decided there was a few couple of things that had happened. Uh, and one thing was I was looking at an online publication and this often happens mm. um, where you can't find the writers or the photographers or kind of you're reading an article and you're like, well, who who wrote this? Yeah. Um, you know, find out more information. And quite often they're hidden. And this happens all the time, but I, I, I went on this um, and I won't name it because I'm not a, I'm not a name and shame. Um, <laughs> But but I went on this particular magazine and there was a page of writers. And I was like, oh, my God, this is glorious. It's actually got a, a page dedicated to writers. And right. there was over 50 writers. And and I was so excited. But And there was photos of everyone. But yeah. then in the same breath, as I was scrolling through these pictures, I'm like, where are the women? Right. Yeah. Like, where are the women? And also, everyone's white. Yes. Uh, it, it, you know, they were my instant thoughts. Uh, and I just thought, you know what, I've had enough. I've oh. had enough. I'm going to start a Facebook group. Okay. And I initially just thought, you know what, I'm just going to start a Facebook page, yeah. see if I can find the other female journalists. Oh, lovely. Um, uh, and uh, and I thought, well, it's a, it's kind of women in jazz, but there's loads of fabulous organizations called women in jazz. But at the time, it was very specific in my head about journalism at, at that at that point. Yeah. Um, so I thought, oh, media, women in jazz media. <laughs> so I so I set up a Facebook page and, and that was honestly that was um, the, the main reason behind it. But then within a few days, I had a direct message onto that page from a writer a journalist um in China and she's oh. actually what she's in the team now yes. um but she messaged me and she said oh my god I've been looking for something like this for years I think I'm the only woman that writes about jazz in all of China oh wow I know and I was like what <laughs> I was like firstly I know nothing about the jazz industry in China yes. but also what a shocking statement to make exactly. really. yeah look um there is yeah. And then uh, you know, a few days after I had a, a similar message from a journalist in, in Spain saying that they well, and her words were they hate women in Spain <laughs> uh, in jazz. That, yeah, that was her impression. That's, that's yeah. not me saying that, but that was her impression. <laughs> and I suddenly thought, OK, do you know what? A Facebook page is probably not going to cut it. <laughs> I, I need to do something a little bit more serious. So yeah. I thought about a mission statement and thought, well, what do I actually want to do? And then I kind of reached out to some incredible women and, mm. and basically formed this kind of not for not for profit organization that's just become something very beautiful. What a beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing that. I wish everyone was like you in the music industry. It would definitely be a more inclusive place to be, wouldn't it? Well, and this is my thing. And, and ultimately, you know, mission statement sounds fancy, but, you know, it, I, I, my dream and this is personally as well as women in jazz media. Yeah. I just want us all to be able to do our thing. Like enough. what, whatever it is, yeah. you know, in whatever industry, I want us all to be able to do our thing where we feel encouraged, where we feel safe, where yeah. we can just do our thing, which is really quite simple. Um, but it is actually hard. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's you know, it really is that simple to me. 
Oh, thanks, Fiona. So how long have you actively been in the music industry for? Well, I'm a million years old. I certainly no, feel not. Old. <laughs> but no. I actually, I have one of these crazy stage mums. Um, so I, I've actually been working in the industry since I was about two. Wow. Um, so apparently the minute I could kind of you know, walk and, and do things, I was yeah. doing um, a lot of like modeling. And I had, um, I've got, well, I've, I've, I've got ginger hair. But as a child, I had a very specific ginger hair freckles. So it was quite kind of marketable in in, in certain things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so my mum kind of you know, put me to all these auditions. So I trained in dance, drama and music. Um, I went to stage school and I did West End and, and theatre uh, and all that kind of thing. So technically, since I was two is actually how long I've been in the industry. So I've seen a few things. So you've grown up in the industry, shall we say. And Fiona, did you have kind of a musical uh, kind of upbringing as in an education or was this all just practical experience and lived experience? Well, I trained, yeah, I trained in in dance, drama and music uh, and yeah. I'm a classically trained pianist. Yeah. Um, and, and as I say, I went to stage school, so I did train in theatre. My jazz work, to be honest, I've not really trained in that. that that's something I've developed and grown into uh, yeah. later, later uh, in life. It's not something I studied really initially. Yeah. Um, so so but I do I, I do have um, uh, kind of qualifications in, in, in a range of different things and same with my education work. But I think we all just go with experience as we go yeah. along, really. I'm not sure the things I learned necessarily help me now. <laughs> Sometimes they do come in useful now and again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And obviously, when you've kind of grown up in this environment and being female and being so underrepresented, how have you found that? And what kind of challenges and barriers has that brought up for you, Fiona? Well, do you know what? I think I've been, and I, I talk to many people about this all the time, obviously. And I think in, in many respects, I've been quite fortunate yeah. in that, um, my, you know, and I and I do kind of credit to my mum, who's who was completely unstoppable and fierce. So yeah. I've pretty much always been the same way. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's not necessarily saying that, you know, if you're not that way, that's a problem. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, I've had a few challenges and, and I'll give you what, one example. Yeah. Um, well, I'll give you two examples. So it's when it. I was about 14 yeah. and I was very naughty because that was back in the day when you didn't need ID. <laughs> and if you put on some heels and makeup, you could get into clubs and look older than okay. you actually yeah. would, yeah. Uh, which you obviously can't do now. Um, but I was working in a, a in a jazz piano bar, actually. Um, and I did a lot of kind of work like that when I was kind of 30, uh, sort of 13, 14. Yeah. Um, and there was a pub kind of around the corner from this jazz bar that were doing like kind of open mic type nights. Uh, and they had a piano and I went with a friend uh, and I just started playing the piano and everyone was really lovely. And I was you know singing uh, and the landlord. Uh, uh, and I mean, this is a while ago, but I, I think he was probably in his 40s or 50s quite a large gentleman you know a a typical kind of stereotypical pub landlord yeah and he saw you know people love you do you want to come and do this every week and I was thrilled I was like this was like a job I'd got without my parents this was like you know oh this is I've done this on my own uh and I was very excited and I went back the following week uh, and I played some songs and at the end of the night he said oh you where are you going and so train station so I'll give you a lift yeah. now I didn't even think anything of that and, and again in my kind of innocence and got in yeah. the car took me to the station and then we got to the station and as I was about to get out he leaned over to try and kiss me oh, I'm sorry to hear that oh well and the thing is you know looking back on it now I probably should yeah. have said something yeah. but the, the the frame of mind I was in at the time I was like no no I'm not I'm not you know, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. That's, you know, and he was quite repulsive, but he looked at me and he said, look, if you want to work in the business, this is what you've got to do. That's totally unacceptable. And that stuck with me at, at, at that age yeah, because yeah. I was like, well, do you know what? If that's the expectation, then I'm not doing this. Yeah, I don't now, think so. Many people probably would not have been able to handle it in that way. That's yeah. why I say I all credit to my mum because yeah. I was just like, not for one second. I was like, no, I don't think so. And I got out the car and I never went back. Right. So, you know, I, I've had experiences mm. that are negative yeah. and I think many people have yeah. and, and we all have to, we can only do what we feel is right at the time, right. um, it, it, you know, and I know many people who 
who would have felt quite trapped and and very kind of unsettled by that. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I I just thought no, nope. <laughs> and I got out the car and I'm like I'm not doing this. Yeah, good on you. Is there any other experiences that you want to share with us as well? Well, another one slightly light hearted, which I think uh, many uh, women get is, uh, as I say, I'm a musician. Uh, yeah. And again, not not naming and shaming, but I'm also a journalist. And there was yeah. a, a kind of colleague of mine, someone in the industry that I was quite friendly with. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, he didn't realise I was I was a journalist. Okay. And I posted something on Facebook about an article. And I was just, oh, here's, here's my latest article. Yeah. And the comment he put was so patronising. And it was like a pat on the head. He yeah. was like, oh, look you write as well isn't that lovely in this really kind of patronizing and, and I thought about that quite a bit thinking well wh where did that come from mm -hmm. and and you know I think he only knew I sang and I think mm -hmm. there were a lot of issues for singers where there's this kind of you know stereotypical yeah. um, impression yeah. of singers which is not true but yeah, yeah that was really patronizing and I think as women we get that a lot it's yeah. like a pat on the head. It's, oh, look, you oh, you write as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so I've had a few, Nick, I mean, so many positive experiences. And, and I'm I'm generally a positive person, but mm -hmm. I'm also honest. You yeah, know, yeah. So I have experienced a lot of the negative things as, as much as anybody. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that, Fiona, as well. So how's that kind of impacted you as a person and the way you feel about yourself and obviously your career? What kind of impact has that had? Well, I think, you know, it, it's really driven me. Um, but not just in my own work as far as, you know, I am what I am, Yeah. you know, and, and, and I think in particular with music, and I think this is what's sometimes quite tricky, um, is, you know, if you're looking at the commercial element of music, mm -hmm. um, versus, I mean, see jazz, for example, I mean, this is not kind of, the, you know, there's no, it's not a huge commercial market for jazz. It's very niche. Yes. Um, so a lot of people, I think, quite often don't understand jazz. But I think for me, a, a achievement is achievement. Yes. And, uh, you know, and I think, you know, not even just music, but I, I really focus on well, what is an achievement for me mm -hmm. and what is an achievement for other people. So if your goal, for example, is to have, you know, a number one hit that's got millions of streams on Spotify, then you go for that. And I, you know, and I want you to be supported and be able to do that. But equally... If singing in a pub round the corner yeah. where you've got a lovely crowd of people loving your music, that is also an achievement. Of course so it I, is. You know, so for me, I think, you know, what, what drives me is just trying to be comfortable and confident in who I am and, yeah. and helping other people do the same. Yeah. But, but, to, but to be realistic, you know, and I think COVID taught us that okay. when loads of musicians, for example, you suddenly couldn't go and gig mm. and there was a big you know, um, uh, to be honest a bit of a mental health crisis because yeah. you know if you're a performer and your thing is performing and you can't do that anymore well who yeah. are you yes yeah uh, you know so yeah. for me that was a really good kind of reflective time to go yeah but you know what for some people just getting up in the morning you yeah. know is an achievement if you're yeah. suffering from kind of mental health and getting up that is a huge achievement yeah whereas for others it's performing in front of millions of people so yeah. I think for me I'm just driven by the reality of of what an achievement is for you as an individual I that was it. a long answer sorry <laughs> no 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 don't apologize I think it's it's about being individual to yourself and also knowing what you're looking for and and I think that's what I'm getting from you is don't look at other people and compare yourself to them focus on what's good for you and what you're trying to achieve yeah and, yeah and that's hard in this industry and especially with social media where you know I think and, and when you're first starting out you can quite easily get kind of drawn into this well I need to look this way yeah. I need to sound this way my music needs to be this way yeah um and it's very hard I think sometimes to be would well, you know what actually I don't fit in any of those boxes yeah. and that's more than fine I'm going to celebrate the fact that I don't fit into that box and create <laughs> my own box you know I think we need more of that <laughs> I do that yeah I love that Fiona so tell us a little bit more kind of on your thoughts and feelings around equality diversity inclusion especially when you're looking at kind of the jazz scene and and where you're at with that so tell us some more well, as I say, this is you know partly why I started up Women in Jazz Media because yeah. I mean historically jazz has always been white male dominated, you know, since since its inception, uh, yeah. which is crazy when you consider where 
jazz came from a, as a music because it certainly wasn't a white dominated yeah. uh, genre right. um but again you know back in 20s and 30s you know when you think about yeah you know, the rights people had you know white domination was everywhere yes. um yeah. uh, and sadly that is still the case uh in jazz mm -hmm. um and also gender um yeah. and as i say i've i've you know been working as a journalist for well, gosh, I don't know how many years, seven or eight years, maybe okay. I want to say. Yeah, um, sure. But most of the publications I've written for, if I've not been the only woman, there's only been maybe one other woman or, um, or maybe one or two. Yes. So I've always kind of, you know, realised that there's not many women out there. Yes. And then also um, everyone's white. Right. Um, you know, uh, and, mm. uh, and when I started Women in Jazz Media and really started to look at, well, is this just my impression? Is this just my yeah. world, kind of where yeah. I've been? You know, yeah. Is this the truth? Yeah. Um, and again, not, not naming and shaming, but the majority of certainly UK jazz publications yeah. um, are still absolutely white male dominated. Yeah. Um, right. And for me, it's like, come on, it's well, time. Yeah. It was time before, <laughs> but it's, it's certainly time now. So, yeah. yeah, there's still very much a kind of an issue there. And, and the same, not just in journalism. Um, yeah. Look at sound engineers, yeah. you know, look at festival lineups, um, so. look at photographers. So yeah. it is absolutely getting better, but yeah. we can't be under the illusion that it's a fair playing field at the moment. We're right. not there yet. Right. So if there was two things you could change in the next couple of years, Fiona, what would they be? What would you like to see if you could change a couple of things? Do you know what I, I, I would like to not do? Yeah. Because what, what I do, and I, I can't help it, uh, it's just what I do. You know, if I'm scrolling on social media and I see a playlist yeah. or I see a magazine yeah. or I see an image or, or you know, the, the visuals that we're kind of you know, thrown at us through social media, I can't help it, but I immediately go, why is everyone male? Or why is everyone white? Yeah. Or, you know, all those, all those, you know, why is everyone young? Yeah. You know, because that's the thing. When we talk about diversity, it's quite easy to just think about, you know, gender or kind of, you know, uh, colour or, I mean, it, yeah. it's everything under that. Yeah. I would love to be able to go on social media and not question why there's a playlist picture where everyone's white or yes. why everyone's male or yeah. why everyone's young. I would like to not be able to do that. So yeah, yeah, I would like to see basically everyone represented. Yes, that's beautiful. And that's what I aim for too. And I think if we have more of these organizations and collectives working together and calling out these things as well, because I think it is about highlighting them. And I know many organizations already know this, but it's really about looking at what you're doing and what you're putting out there as well, especially on your socials, to feel included and accepted. And I think that's something that I always push for is to have that visible representation. So, yeah, I really feel you on that one. And that's wonderful about you know, this podcast and the episodes you've done. It's kind of addressing it because I think and, and, and with my education hat on, you know, these are not new things. We've always known these are issues, yeah. but yeah. it's it's taking it from chatting about it, discussing it, analyzing it to actually actioning action. something. Yeah. And, and I've always been an action person. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I've spent many times discussing and debating. It's like, no, do you know, can we actually just do something? Yeah. Um, but it is tricky, I think, to find that balance. You know, a number of times I might see an image. Um, yeah. And as I say, let, let's say it's all men. Uh, as mm -hmm. an example yeah. I'm so tempted to to comment on Facebook for example and just go why is it all men um yeah. really easy to do that I, and I'm not saying people shouldn't necessarily do that but for me it's about actively changing it's like yeah. what's the best way to get that whoever that was who posted that what yeah. is the most effective way for me to help them realize the problem with that image yeah so yeah that that's a key thing it's about changing mindsets and yeah. sometimes it's just people hadn't thought about it I mean exactly. you know and obviously they should have thought about it but let, yeah it's another another conversation <laughs> it's like well can you now think about it yeah. um you know so yeah that's a key thing for me I love that thank you and do you think uh kind of cultural and age differences have an impact on the amount of equality and diversity work that we can do at the moment and do you think there's a kind of resistance for change yeah, uh, yes but also um I, I, things are changing and i get so excited when i see someone like 
Judy Dench on the front cover of a magazine. Yeah, yeah, so do uh, I. And, and I don't think everyone, I mean, women do, I think, yeah. but I don't think everyone's realised how inspiring that is to see a woman of that age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful yeah. on the front cover of a magazine because for so long it's been dominated by this kind of perceived idea of beauty this kind of you know size zero white tall yeah. Yeah. young all these different things um so I, I i love that we are seeing more and more what i would define as real women yeah on on places that i think matter because yeah. representation is key yeah. uh and you know, whether you like it or not magazine covers images we see those all the time and and i think the younger generation see that and it's important that they see everything yeah. is possible yeah um and i have to say with with my women in jazz media hat on um because we um publish three magazines a year and i absolutely love choosing the front cover okay. and i take it so seriously because i genuinely think okay what have i not seen enough of on a front cover yeah that, that's my starting point. And yeah. I'm thinking, well, do you know what? I haven't seen trumpet players on a yeah, female yeah. trumpet, but obviously it's yeah, on women, yeah. but I'm yeah. like, I haven't seen enough guitarists or drummers yeah. or, you know, yeah. so I deliver and I love that. And then I also think age. Okay, well, you know, have there been young female guitarists or maturer female guitarists? So, yeah. And I love that because I just think that the front cover, uh, that visual is yeah. so important because if you see it, Yes. then I think that helps you believe it can happen. So I, right. I'm very passionate about that. I love that. It inspires you, doesn't it? And, and it kind of gives you that sense of role models. And you can, when you see someone, you can aspire to be like them and you could think that there is a place for you in mm. that industry, whatever you want to be. And I think that's really important. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. It really is important. It's essential. Yeah, definitely. And kind of, Fiona, working in the music industry all this time, has it affected your mental health at all? Oh God, yeah, I'm I'm completely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think on you know, I, and I often explore this, and and one day uh, I I would love to actually write a book about the kind of the creative mindset because it is fascinating. Yeah. Um, and I spend some time speaking to people who don't work in the creative industries, yeah. and they do perceive kind of so-called creatives as crazy like I'm the kind of the crazy theatrical yeah. one yeah 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 um whereas in my world no I'm not I'm, I'm the same as everybody <laughs> same yeah, as everybody yeah. else but, you know um so that that's I think really interesting but also you know if you're a, a creator as a writer yes. then you know many of us we will have those moments at like three in the morning when yeah. I wake up with an idea yeah and I lie there thinking Shall I get up and actually just go and write that or shall I go back to sleep and that kind of thing. So, you know, there is kind of, you know, a kind of, uh, a, a kind of, I don't know if it's weird, but an interesting kind of mindset of a creative. Yeah. yeah. Um, but because I think, you know, you are um, in touch with your emotions in yeah. a different way. Yes. You know, and that's not to say if you're not a so-called creative that you're not in touch with your emotions, but I think it's a different way because the way if you if you create and say whether that's dance or theater, you know, you, you connect with emotions in Emotion. a different way. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and therefore I think, you know, um that you leave yourself vulnerable and yeah. you leave yourself open yes. and and ultimately insecure. And I think I don't know any person who works in the creative industry who doesn't suffer from insecurity yeah, and yeah. not feeling good enough and, and, yeah. and I have never felt good enough in no, my same, life same actually <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's why I think it's also important not to compare yourself to other people as well because you can look around you and think well this person's doing really well and this person's doing really well but again you don't know all the hard work they're putting into it you don't know what goes on behind the scenes and it might look good but it doesn't always mean it is great you know what I'm saying so absolutely and this is why going back to what I said earlier about achievements yeah. is it's yeah you know, when when you have those moments of insecurity and it's, look and I'm this is just my thoughts as yeah, okay, yeah not to say that I, I know bad. what I'm talking about <laughs> but but for me it's like when you have those moments of you know well this isn't good enough or you know is to just think about oh well hang on a sec what is actually achievement yeah. and I say yeah you know, writing a song even if you never play that song to anybody else yeah you know, actually writing that, there, there are people across the world who would kill to be able to have the skills to write a song. So, yeah. yes, I think, yeah, that help keeps 
me checked with kind of reality is actually well you know actually what what have I achieved you know so yeah that's what I try and do I love that and when we're coming back to the jazz and women in jazz as well let's come back to that it's like Mm. kind of looking at discrimination and stigma Mm. do you think a lot of that still exists today and if so what can we do to prevent this from happening I I wish I could say it didn't um but Almost on a daily basis, um, I will have a conversation or get a text. uh, And as I say, because of my work, it is always from women. I'm sure Mm -hmm. men, you know, suffer in some way. I'm just not experienced in in that, uh, uh, certainly in that detail. Yeah. Um, But I'll tell you a common thing I get, uh, and almost going back to what I mentioned about singers, is if a woman walks into a gig, the presumption is she's a singer. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. So and they're treated in a certain way. Yeah. And what I have is women who are saxophonists or women yeah. who are drummers. It's yeah. like, well, no, actually, I'm the drummer. Or uh, managers, actually. You know, yeah. Even, yeah. Yeah. But but there was a kind of a, 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 a lovely moment I had a, a couple of years ago. So we put on some events at the London Jazz Festival. Lovely. Uh, and what we try and do is incorporate not just female performers, yes. but you know, platforming instrumentalists, but also female photographers, Lovely. sound engineers to really kind of, you know, have a, a, fe- a strong female presence. Yes. And we had a gig and a guy in the audience came up to me afterwards and he said, oh, he said, um, you've got a female sound engineer. Yeah. And I said, oh, yes, we, yes, we do. He said, I didn't know women did that. Wow. Okay. I know. And I was quite surprised, but I just looked at him and I said, well, you do now. Spread well, the word. Stereotypes, isn't it? This is another thing. We have stereotypes and gender roles. And I yes. think it's another thing, especially in the music industry, whereas it's very male dominated and people automatically think, oh, they must be male. So they're this way. If you're female, you must be either a dancer or a singer, which yes. is totally unacceptable and it's not okay. For this yeah. day, really. it, it is but part of the problem with that as I say is because you know and, and I go to many many gigs and say or primarily jazz yeah. but I go to many many gigs I could literally count the number of female sound sound engineers I've seen yeah. like, like easily I could easily yeah. count them to say you know so I, until we see that fairer picture yeah because when you see it it's like this guy he was like yeah. oh my god a female sound engineer so it's yeah. rare and it, yeah. it needs to not be rare yeah. So I, I think, and 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 I think quite often, uh, and I have this, and you know, for example, my musicians that I work with, and, and and I cannot begin to tell you how much I I love the musicians I work with, um, but they are I have a female backing singer, yeah, um, but but the rest of my musicians are male, right, um, and, and obviously with my women in jazz media hat on, I kind of you know I quite often think about this, yeah, uh, and and I'm sure my saxophonist Laura won't mind me saying this. He said to me, he said, look, Fee if you need to replace me with a woman, I understand. Oh. And I was, I know. And I was like, oh, and, and this is the thing. It's like, I'm I'm n- not going to replace people just for the yeah. sake of it. Yeah, so yeah. what I do, because I say I love my musicians, I have no intention of replacing anyone with yeah, a woman. Yeah, yeah. But I bring guests in. So when Lovely. I have a gig, I will bring in female guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so where possible, where, when I'm adding, and also if someone can't make it, then yes, I will think, do you know what? I'm going to get, a yeah. female musician so yeah. that it is equal so sometimes it's just thinking about you know that and looking a bit farther and I think that's a, a, a um, another issue and quite often I will get emailed by men yeah. saying oh you know we, we need a drummer can you recommend some female drummers yeah and it's like I absolutely can and I will quite yeah. happily send them a list with loads <laughs> and loads but it's interesting because it's like they obviously don't know many female drummers yeah. the fact yeah. that they're coming to me and asking so uh, again it's about representation the visual of you know and, and I spend a lot of time posting all over social media pictures pictures for example of female drummers it's like look yeah. yep they're out there yeah, so yeah. yeah I think seeing it uh, yeah. is really important and I think you've also mentioned we've got an infrastructure issue where people don't know where to look for female jazz players or jazz musician musician musicians sorry so um <laughs> you know if, if people do want to look for jazz musicians and they want to look for your organization do you have any links where people can follow you 
Oh, well, absolutely. But I just must just give a little shout out, actually, because you mentioned about yeah. finding musicians that there are loads of wonderful organisations out there yes. that really start to network and kind of build databases of female musicians. And, yeah. and when you mentioned that, the F list uh, yeah. sprang into my mind because there's a fantastic organisation and they do actually have a database of female yes. musicians. Yeah. Um, uh, and on our website, which is just women in jazz media, yeah. uh, com, and, and we're everywhere. We're on all yeah. social media platforms. Uh, and we do have partners and we spend all our time sharing all the other great communities, the great organizations. Yes. Um, because as I say, we're not for profit. This is not about us at all. Yeah. This is about we're all in this yeah. together. Um, so yes, women in jazz media.com is the easiest thing. So that's the F list. Shout out to the F list because um, yes. um, they're fantastic. So yeah, the F list and women in jazz media. So do you have any socials that people can follow you on, Fiona? Yeah, what well, for me? Well, for me, uh, and I've got there's my artist page yes. um which is just so if you type in fiona ross in google um yeah. you, my website comes up which is just fiona ross.co.uk because i have kind of instagram journalism instagram artists facebook so i'm everywhere so yeah fiona ross.co.uk uh, uh, is the easiest thing and for me does women in jazz media have their own website as well that people could... we do yep yep we have our website uh and or if you you know and i say instagram facebook uh, whatever was formerly known as Twitter. Um, yeah. But yeah, so womeninjazzmedia.com and yeah. then, yeah, uk. I'll leave all that in the description below. Thank you, Fiona. And before we go, is there any major wins or successes that you'd like to share with us? Oh, gosh. Um, oh, I love that question, but I'm also kind of, oh, I don't, having talked about achievement, <laughs> I've talked about achievements. Yeah. Um, well, do you know what? I think I... I, I I, I tell you what sticks in my mind recently, um, and this probably sounds a bit cheesy, but it's true. Um, yeah. Talking about what I was saying about yeah the community, we I had a a, a woman I, I won't say who it is, but a woman at a gig that we had in um, November. Yes, uh, and she came up to me at the end of the night, and she and she said to me, "Thank you," and I thought, like, "Oh yeah, no worries." And she said, "No, no, thank you for making me seen." She said, "I work. I've been working for years." you make me feel seen. Oh. Yeah, and for me, that is an achievement. Yeah. Because that was a really powerful thing to say, that this woman, who's yeah. amazing, and yeah. it hadn't even occurred to me that she felt that way <laughs> at all, but she said, thank you for making me feel seen. So yeah. that, I think, that's an achievement. Oh, I love that. What a lovely way to end the podcast. <laughs> thank you so much, Fiona. Thank you again for taking the time out and for sharing your story. It's been absolutely inspirational. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me a guest. And honestly, the work you do is wonderful. So you're just as inspirational. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Okay. Thank, thank you. you.